guys. So, I'll show you the leftovers of the project. Tilt the camera down. So, I got it in a sealed container. Um, filled it up. As you can see, that is a whack ton of cotton. And I went through all of my oil, believe it or not. So at least this should get me through quite a few fires because each fire you only use one to two of these. That's it. They're already saturated. So basically all you do guys is place them where you wanna start your fire in between some wood or some kindling or whatever. Um, in my past videos, if you haven't watched, I normally just load the wood stove up with uh, whatever I got, pallet wood, uh, leftover two by fours, whatever. And I don't, I just use two of these and it'll start the two by fours up or logs up, no problem, without any kindling. That's why I like making this stuff. So I got a giant container also from the dollar store. So can't beat that. Got my two lighters. And uh, <laughs> that's that. So I got plenty more. I have the, uh, I also have small little uh, hand sanitizer, which burns really hot, really well. But that stuff's a premium. So I rather use the oil and cotton rounds because there's not such of a run on it at this point. Um, also have Vaseline. Um, Vaseline and cotton work really well as well, guys. And uh, yeah, so my dad was just here. He was chilling at his, well, he was working over at his trailer and he wanted me to get the air on. So obviously, air's on. He was uh, here enjoying it. Um, and yeah, everything's good with him. He just got back from the dentist. They had to fix one of his teeth there, so um, yeah, they're open for business now, doing stuff like that. They're not doing um, routine uh, cleanings and checks yet, but they're doing any emergency work and stuff like that, as far as I know. Um, what else is going on? Okay, I gotta take you over. Oh, actually, I can show you right here. So. My tubing that I have just uh, free floating on top of the flue. So I have a stainless steel whack up pipe there. Um, I'm not too concerned about it being tightly wrapped around the flue for a couple reasons. Um, I don't want to bend it and kink it. And, you know at least half of it is in contact with the hot flow. So I think we're gonna be good. Now the tubing that runs off of it is silicone. And that's important because silicone can take the heat really well. And then further on as we go, I'm gonna rig up something like this. So this is a check valve. And this is system guys is gonna be electricity free. If you've watched back at where I was experimenting with one on a, my cubic mini wood stove making a DIY boiler system, I used a tiny little USB pump which worked really well. I was I was impressed with it. But when air gets in the router rotors of the um, pump, the pump doesn't like it. Pump can't pump. So this is why I've gone and bought, this is a, for boilers, a boiler system. It goes in line to the system at the highest point of the system. So it's gonna have to go near where I fill the system up. And it will um, get rid of air out of the system automatically without me doing anything, which I absolutely love. The check valve is now the pump. Now how is that going to work? How am I going to move water without electricity, guys? How is that going to work? Well, 
when you boil or heat water, um, it starts, it likes to start moving because it's getting, um, the molecules start getting dancing around and having a great old time. <laughs> um, and why you need a check valve is you want it, the dancing around to go in one direction that you control. So by putting one in, um, cool water can only travel this direction, okay? So when water starts getting heated up down at this end, uh, where the flue pipe is, it's going to start traveling and travel back around this way. And as it's heating up, it's also building up pressure. So it will do a thermal siphon and automatically start moving stuff around. Now the only thing I'm missing, which is extremely important, is a pressure relief valve. And what that is, it's a spring valve <clears throat> that will open up in case you get too much pressure, aka steam, because we don't want to make a bomb. We just want to move heated water around the tiny house a little bit faster. Now, the problem with my setup as is, obviously the line's not tightly wrapped around the flue. We know that. Also, I don't have very many rads whatsoever. I have two but I'm not entirely sure where the other one is. I, ha I found the one, but uh, the other one's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna have to do a full day over here s sometime soon to sort that out. So, that will come eventually. Um, so yeah, I'll be over here messing around tinkering because there is literally nothing to do. I have some minimal work coming up and literally that's it um, so that's like I said guys I'm not spending too much money all this stuff that you see I've already spent money on like last year um, which was okay because it comes in so slowly that it's pathetic a lot of these items came free from wish because they couldn't make the delivery times so that's pretty shocking. However, I was most shocked at this guy making the delivery time, which is the um, stainless steel tubing, which I just have sitting on top of the flue pipe. Ow. As I step on everything on the floor. So this is just sitting on where the hottest part of the pipe is going to be. It's going to be right here where the flue gases from the smoke are, are getting slowed down by a restriction of a 90 degree turn. So it's going to force a lot of that heat to wrap around these coils and they're just, there they go, they're just uh, silicone on with some gear clamps and I kind of just put them in behind um, the Cubic Mini. Now this guy, um, I rigged up a, a Y fitting. So, Y or T. And so this is going to be my, I'm going to have to put a funnel in. And I have to raise this section of pipe, or just lift it up actually, so it's above this guy. So that will be my filling station. Now what I have to do is, obviously mount this to the wall, but this valve will only be open when I'm originally adding water and alcohol. So here, this guy, I'm going to have to add another T, go up above my fill port and put the um, air remover um, <laughs> contraption in and the check valve contraption in. Though, I think the check valve contraption needs to be down uh, a little lower. Um, more like connecting to this other end that drops all the way down to the bottom. And for rads, like I mentioned, I only found the one. I do have a bigger one other than this somewhere, which I have to find. Probably buried in this mess. 
And then I have some tubing and some parts and those aluminum bus bars, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'll be working on that project as we get into fall in the next couple weeks. And I got some more fittings and gear clamps here. Though I just need a, um, th these fittings actually connect to one another, but I can't put it like that because that wouldn't work. <laughs> but I need to get a, I almost may want to put it like this, or just before the check valve, because something tells me, is air gonna be trapped here when it hits the flapper, or is it gonna be after? Um, either side would be good and always above at the highest point um, is the goal. So I need to get from this size down to a little stubby tubing size so you know uh, water can flow through there and push through there and we won't have an issue. And I gotta find a pressure relief valve. There's all kinds of little parts I gotta still collect on this project guys as well as more rads. I need, um, actually I need more tubing, more rads, and um, yeah, um, pretty hard to come by the rads. Uh, it's a shame. Um, And then I gotta figure out what kind of alcohol I'm gonna have to use and the water ratio mix, all that fun stuff. So it's a ever ongoing project, guys. And this is, we're just getting to the start of it, basically. So other than that, I'm gonna do some more cleaning around here, but um, that'll be for another day because I gotta find a bunch of stuff and anything I don't use is going to be going. Uh, I used to be, I'm, I'm slowly turning into a minimalist. And that's, it's, it's a fine balance being a prepper and a mil, min, minimalist because I just can't hoard stuff in a tiny house. It's not doable. It's uh, not good. So, <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen. And um, other than that, I think that's it. So we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Um, I gotta shut some stuff down. Click. And I also gotta click this guy off. Guys, he's charging my cell phone, or my dad's cell phone, which he needed. His cell phone's almost dead, actually. So I gotta get that back to him. And I gotta shut the air conditioning off, because I'm about out of here. But, uh, yeah, guys, uh, really enjoy the tiny house. Very awesome. Very, very cool stuff here. Pretty exciting that I can uh, power, like, basically anything. Um, pretty impressed with that. So I'll show you quickly what's going on over here. <clears throat> down to 22 amps now that I shut most of the loads off other than a fan. Wires nice and heavy, no heat. I like it. That's the main thing guys. So that's good. So I'll just let that guy charge up for the rest of the day. Um, more rain is coming and that will be that. So I am out of here. Uh, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. And if you guys have any hints or tips on designing this boiler setup, and if you could really, you know, that will help me. But what really would help me is financially. Um, if you're not willing to donate, please hit the thumbs up button on my videos. That helps passively, very passively. So you gotta do it quite, a lo quite often, guys, if you wanna continue to see me. And uh, other than that, pay, become a Patreon member, a dollar a month. Um, currently, I have three Patreon members. And um, I really don't spend any of that money because 
Um, I basically let it come in for about a year or so before spending it because there's that little of an amount. So I can't really buy anything useful with that. So I just let it build up over time and that's the way it goes. So other than that, I think I'm out of here. And I gotta get my dad's phone back to him. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys.